All right, guys. Today we're going to work on making an objective, kind of where we have to do certain things to activate uh, a trigger to spawn something, anything of that sort. So, um, for example, today we're going to do uh, activating a uh, or creating a sword. Um, it's a common thing in Minecraft to where people always want, oh, they want the diamond sword. So uh, I've pre-created some props here and pretty much the objective that I'm going to be using is to have players um, find these three, four items, um, these three diamond doors and this stick here um, to, to bring it, put it on top of the crafting table and then the crafting table will then pop out a sword, um, diamond sword, that's what we we'll want to do. So first off, um, I, these are coming from a model pack. Uh, this is the um, Minecraft mob packs. Uh, it's this one. It's uh, one of the many models that they have in here. I'm using. That's where I got this diamond ore from. Now, in or if you were to use this. Um, to use this uh, mob pack, what you'd have to do is you would have to subscribe to it, have it download, then when you go to... the uh, add-ons folder in Gary's mod, you'd have to find it, of course. And then once you have found it, it's one that's it's pretty large, uh, in case you have a lot, a lot of them, you'd have to extract the GMA file um, once you've extracted it, I'll include a program that you have to use to extract it. It'll come out like uh, it'll come out looking like this. Pretty much, you'll have to grab these two folders and put them into your Gary's Mod directory, and it will merge with your materials and your models folder. But once you do that, um, once you've extracted that, you can then start using all those models from that model pack inside of Hammer. And uh, it's really cool um, to, get, to get that working. So uh, I'll have another tutorial, uh, another video that'll help you adding custom models and stuff to your maps and how to embed them into your BSP file. But for now, this will work for when you are um, loading it yourself. So, um, oops, don't do that. So we've created the models. Now, each one of these, I'm using prop physics because I want players to be able to pick it up. Um, it will generate output on you, so it's going to start asleep. This allows the server just to, when it says start asleep, it means that this prop won't be moving at all until a player comes up and touches it. Um, that way, it, if you have a lot of them in the map, if you have several different events or something like that, um, it will allow the, uh, it won't lag the server with all the props floating around everywhere and having to be calculated their movement and stuff. So start asleep is always a good thing to do, generate output on you, because then you pick it up. Now, there was no stick model that I could find, so I had to actually craft this out. It's just a simple 4x4 four four brush with a like 4, 4, and 20 um, with a wood texture. That's all I did, really. And we need to, we, since this is a brush that I crafted, or I made in Hammer, you have to make it a Funk Fizz Box. Um, it's pretty much this little brush right here I created. The Funk Fizz Box allows it to be picked up, allows it to be... Um, physically active and moving and everything in, within the game and you want to make it uh, material type wood that way it makes wood sounds when it moves around or whatever and you also want to the mass scale this is something that also you have to deal with on props as well um, these shouldn't have an issue Let, let's say you have a prop that's as big as this block right here if I did not edit the mass scale on it it would be too heavy for a player to pick up so I would have to change the mass scale, make it like 0 0.3, 0 0.12, something to where it makes the the weight of it just not heavy at all. I probably don't even need to put 0.3 because this object is so tiny anyway. Um, but it's just for safekeeping. So they're all able to be picked up. A player can come by, pick it up, and move it. Um, and so what we need to do is make the place where it's going to be put. Now, one of the things to notice, I've named these all kind of Diamond Sword Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4. And the reason why I'm naming them the same way is to kind of help um, 
us when we need to activate the trigger. Let's say you have other props on the map and they have different names, like maybe you're making a diamond armor or something like that. Anyway, you'd have to name it differently. And the way we're going to do this, the reason why we're doing this this way is because we're going to create a filter. Um, let me just show this a little bit clearer. We're going to create the, uh, the trigger brush first. Just so you know what we're going to be doing. And where is this right here? Let's create a little brush. And... This is the brush where people will be bringing the props and putting them on. So we're using the trigger texture just so we don't see it when we build it. I press enter. It makes this little brush for me. Now this is going to be a trigger multiple because a lot of things are going to be happening here. And we're going to call this, we'll go ahead and call it the um, crafting table. Uh, one, in case we have multiple ones. There we go. Now, okay, so we have that done, and we want, all right, so we want this to be triggered by these little objects here, but we only want it to be triggered by those objects. We don't want it to have another, if a weapon falls on top of it, or if some other physics prop falls on top of it, we don't want it to be triggered. We don't want it to think that it's one of these items because since we're crafting a diamond sword, the diamond sword only needs these four items and we don't want it to have to be triggered by anything else. So with that, we need to create a filter. That's what this is here for. So to create a filter, we get to click, click get the um, entity uh, thing and we're going to do filter. Do, 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 do. You know, I think I forgot what it was called. No, 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 you're right. I think it's a filter multi. Um, oh, wait, no, no, no. That's if you have several different filters you want to go through it. We want it to be filter activator class. All right, one thing I messed up on, it's not a filter activator class. It's a filter activator name. So if I refer that to any point in the video again, remember, filter activator name. The class was something else. I, I don't even know why I thought that. But the name, that part is the important part. Okay. There we go. So this is pretty much means this is what will be used to activate this trigger through this filter. And we're going to use name. We're going to call this, well, it has to be the same. Well, let's just call it diamond sword. And the filter class name. Now, this is what it's going to be filtering by. And if you notice, all these have the same kind of beginning name. Just that number that changes in the very end. So would that be the case? I have diamond filter, the diamond filter class name is diamond sword part asterisk. Yes, so this asterisk means that it's gonna be looking for any entity, any object with the name diamond sword part and then anything after that is fine. Um, they will only be looking for these since I've only named these the exact same name with just that last character changing. This will pick up anything with that, with that name. So pretty much the only objects that could allow, that could pass through this filter are these four because these are the only four that are named that. So with that filter being created already, we need to actually have this trigger only be activated by that filter. So what we do here, there. So now this will only be activated by this. So pretty much anything that's going to trigger this item has to go through this saying, hey, is this the right item? Is this the right entity? Yes, it still passes and it'll, it'll trigger something to it. Now, what we want to happen here is that this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. Um, every time this is triggered, we want it to add a counter. Uh, we wanted it to um, Because we know we need four items to go through this trigger before the sword is created. So there's a number four that we have to complete. This is where something else comes in. And I think it's called a math counter. Yeah. And this is where the 
the game is triggering something that's going to add plus one to this counter. And when this reaches a maximum value of four, which we're going to do here, once it reaches that maximum value of four, we're going to have it do something. We're going to have it create the sword in this case. We'll do other examples later. So this is going to be the diamond sword uh, counter. All right, so pretty much every time this is triggered, uh, I'm triggered. We want it to um, target this entity, and we want it to add one. Pretty sure it's add. Yeah, yeah, it should be add. All right, add one. So we're pretty much going to add count of one. So once it's hit once. And th this, this is the way, the reason why we're doing this way is because it doesn't matter which one is, is hits it first. If you, put the, if you put this ore first or that stick first, it'll still just add one. And then once all four of them have been used, the total count will be four and it'll pop out the diamond sword. Now, but we also don't want those entities to just sit there. We also want it to destroy the entity so that once one of these diamonds touches the brush, it disappears. Um, so with that, what we would do is on start touch, activator. This is kind of a keyword. Um, it's going to show up as red as if it doesn't exist, but it's gray. Activator is a class for anything that touches it. And we don't. Oh, by the way, we didn't. We forgot to, to set this on the trigger. We want the flags to be set to uh, physical objects because we don't want people triggering this. All right. So back to this, sorry, on start touch activator, anything that touches it that activates this trigger will be killed. We want it to destroy itself. We don't want it to be in the map anymore. Um, that way, no, not that way. People don't bring the same ore like four times and then create the sword because they have to do it in a specific order or not a specific order. But they have to only use these four items. So now that we have that. Um, Every time it's touched, it kills the item. Every time it's triggered, it sends a count to here. Once this reaches four, we need to have it do something. So this is where we do this. We're selecting the counter. We're gonna add an output. We're gonna put on, once it hits its max value, we want it to create something. Now, this is where I've modded my, um, my FGD file so that I can have a certain weapon. I don't know if it is it still here. Hold on. Um, oh, there it is. Uh, I'll show this on another video. Um, I'll have a little shortcut here to how to add custom weapons to your um, hammer. That way you can actually put them in your map and stuff. Um, otherwise for now I have this here. And we're going to name it the Diamond Sword. Okay, I had to look up something. But now that we have the sword here, um, we want this to spawn once the trigger, once it has reached a max count of four. Um, now, to make a weapon spawn only when you want it to, you have to use something called a point template. Um, template. This is what you use when you want to make like weapon spawners and stuff like that. Um, so we're going to use this for the diamond sword spawn. And the template's going to be... That guy. Um, this thing will not spawn until we have it triggered to do so. Alright, so with that... When the counter hits maximum of four, when it hits the max, we want it to target this and want it to force spawn. That will force this item spawn. Now I'm gonna move this just so it's where I want it to be. I'll have the spawn right on top and it'll fall under the crafting table. And let's see what else. Move it right, every time this is triggered, kills the activator. Adds a count once this hits maximum 
of four, it will then trigger this entity to force spawn the sword. All right, everything looks proper. Uh, this should work. Let's go ahead and have a look, see what we've done. All right, so let's see how this worked. So I think we put it, there it is. Oh, if you're looking what the thing in the top right is, that is actually a face tracking thing. For Gary's mod, it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, let's see how it works. Boop, disappears. Now you can actually have this trigger a sound as well if you want to. I didn't want it to trigger a sound. And you can also have it like, if you get really crazy, you can have like little tiny pieces appear on here and like make it look like you're crafting the sword. I, I didn't do that, I don't care. Uh, you can do that, figure it out. I did that. Anyway, boop. The sword did just pop down, but I picked it up really quickly. Um, you can try to like time a delay so that the player doesn't pick it up immediately, but oh well. Anyway, so it worked, it crafted the sword and now I have a sword too. Swing, swing around. So sweet, that's how you do a um, little event. Uh, I'll make another one that activates like a, a trigger or something like that, um, or activates a teleporter. Obviously, it's really just the same kind of technique that you would use. It's just instead of having it spawn a weapon, you would have it enable a trigger. Like, um, let's say I have a, a door here, and this door starts Disabled if I have it start to uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Or start locked. Um, where is it for a door? Ah, there we go. So for doors, for funk door, there's a flag you can do start locked. Um, for buttons, there's a flag that says um, buttons also have start locked. Uh, for triggers, anything else, there's always, there's always a start locked or start disabled. Um, even this trigger itself has a start disabled. If you were to have it to where every time you would trigger it, instead of um, once once it hits the max value, if you were to have this uh, target that on hit max value, and then you could just do um, unlock, that would essentially once this is hit its max value it'll unlock the door that way you can use the door afterwards um, for teleportations you can have a teleporter trigger that little tr um, teleportation entity you can have that entity be disabled and just have it be enabled once you've hit the ma max counter um, so this is pretty much how you use the counter and the filter together along with a trigger it's really cool. There's lots of possibilities you can do with this. This was just a little possibility, a little example of creating a sword with it. Get creative and see what you can do. See you guys. Good luck.